Uh, my name's Julian Franke, and uh, I'm from Fishers, Indiana. And my project uh, that uh, I just uh, presented was the uh, T-Alpha-1. Uh, it is a three-way base reflex design. Uh, it, uh, it is actually a third iteration of the original concept, and uh, it has gone through many, many changes. And in fact, it doesn't look anything like what it originally started out to be. But uh, uh, in the end, I was, I was pretty happy with the results. I wanted to, uh, I had uh, have been looking into, I had built uh, several years ago, I had built a pair of speakers and I had cut everything out on a, on a friend's uh, CNC router. And I enjoyed uh, the concept of how everything assembled and uh, the fact that you can get a lot of curves and a lot of uh, shapes that you can't get when if you just cut it on a, on a table saw or whatever. Uh, without a lot of uh, sanding or, or uh, shaping. So um, using the CNC router, I finally invested in one, and this was my first uh, project on that CNC router. So, um, and I tried different materials. Some materials worked, some materials didn't. Uh, what I ended up using was uh, a Baltic birch plywood, and uh, that seemed to solve all my problems. My name is Dan Newbecker. I'm from Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, the name of my project is a Waveguide Omni. Well, the, the name came from the use of five different Dayton waveguides, um, the eight and 10 inch round waveguides. Um, the inspiration for it was, uh, I've always uh, leaned towards uh, sound that is um, good depth, good width, um, to the sound stage, um, but true Omni speakers often suffer from imaging problems because of high frequency reflections is, is my uh, take on it. So this speaker was intended to merge the benefits of an Omni with the benefits of a monopole, which is more direct on the uh, tweeter end of it. Um, but often when you do that, if you just have just a front facing tweeter, then you have a power response imbalance. In other words, the, the woofer and the mid-range are sending more sound out into the room because it's going 360 degrees. And if you balance that with the tweeter only, then the amount of high frequencies that's going in the room is less. So there's a power response mismatch. So in this case, I've added a tweeter on the back, but so it doesn't reflect off the wall, it's in a 360 degree horn that goes vertically. So there's no reflections essentially back off the front wall, it goes out to the sides. So you get wide sound stage, but not fast first reflections that cause um, imaging issues. So that's the concept behind it. Uh, well, I've been playing around with um, trying to solve the Omni speaker um, concept since about 2005 or six, when I first got into the hobby, my very first speaker was an Omni speaker. It came to the 2008, which I think was the first Dayton audio event maybe, or MWAF, I forget now, but, um, and since then I've been trying to tweak the, the, the idea and make it better. Um, that's where the idea came from. It's been gestating a long time. I think this is probably the best result I've gotten from it. Um, Bill Sturm, or William Sturm, I brought the B12s, it's a sealed box um, two-way with a um, Eminence Alpha 8 woofer um, and a CSS LD25X um, tweeter. And uh, it's first order crossover, uh, Litzwire coil air core from Parts Express, and the, I hope I say it right, Element Z um, film and foil capacitor. The inspiration was kind of a British design. The BBC has designed for many years uh, very thin wall boxes. And the idea was to enhance the mid-range by keeping the um, box resonances low. So if you're gonna mess something up, mess up the, the base, you know, and keep it out of that you know, critical mid-range. So I want as good of mids as I can, natural vocals, natural guitars. I don't really care about deep bass on these boxes. And I, and I want a tweeter that is transparent. I don't want to hear my tweeter. I just want to hear music. 
I think I've achieved that pretty well. So, um, I'm Nick Santorinus, five hours, I live south of, south of Chicago. Um, I brought two projects. First one is the Nemocini. Um, Nemocini happens to be the Greek Titan and mythology of remembrance, and that's what these are. It's a throwback to 70s monkey coffin style speakers. Um, these are the speakers that I remember looking like this. This is, this is how the speakers looked when I was a kid, and it was just uh, a tribute to those, because that's what I fondly remember. Um, they're built using the cabinets in multiple layers, three quarter plywood, then a layer quarter inch recycled rubber from tires that's used for flooring, and then a layer of half inch MDF. Um, they're very well braced, um, and then the mid-range enclosure is a five-sided dagger style enclosure. So there's no parallel walls. Um, the woofer is a BNC, it's a Pro, it's a 12 PS100. The mid is a Fatal Pro 6 PR150, which is kind of an odd looking driver, but it turns out it's really low distortion. And then the tweeter's at an old school Morel Cat 378. So it's uh, fairly efficient, fairly efficient. Uh, name Bill Schwefel. I'm from north of Milwaukee, 30 miles. So near West Bend, Wisconsin. A project, uh, the speaker I bought was called Defracto Rama. And uh, it's a uh, three-way speaker with uses the Moro uh, Tweemid on, on a large uh, bulbous-shaped uh, baffle. And it uses a rival acoustics uh, R176 7-inch uh, woofer. And that's uh, mounted in a mass-loaded transmission line. It's a uh, mass loader transmission line is um, 47 inches long. The woofer is mounted about 12 inches down the line. And the first half of the line is stuffed at about one pound per cubic foot with uh, acoustic stuff and um, some denim, denim ultra touch material. And the last half of the line is completely open and the line is tuned to 31 Hertz. Well, the, I, I won the drivers, the, the Moral Tweemid I won three years ago here at Midwest Audio Fest. So I had that. And then I also won the Rival Acoustics woofer at a Midwest Audio Fest event. So the cost was like zero for the drivers. I spent about $100 in crossover parts for each channel. So my total cost into the cabinet is uh, about $200 for crossover parts. The lumber, the stair tread material was about $45. I made it out of uh, a Menard's bench top material. And then the cabinets themselves, it's just three quarter inch uh, laminated particle board. That was maybe five, six dollars. So at most I have a total of $300 for invested in the pair of speakers. So. I don't know what my motivation, my motivation for building them is just to see what would happen if I built a speaker on a, a large bulbous um, type uh, baffle board similar to what Henry or Harry Olson did. Um, in 1951, he published an AES paper uh, mounting in his, uh, a seven eighths inch tweeter on a, a large 24 inch diameter sphere. And he compared that to a hemisphere, different circular baffles, uh, rectangular baffles with different roundovers, um, different chamfers. And his conclusion that what the spherical baffle shape was, was actually the best in terms of reducing uh, the amount of diffraction ripple. So I just wanted to to see if, you know, how that would affect the sound of the speaker.